and welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been so long since I made a new video because as some of you know, this month was supposed to be our wedding. But Eric and I decided to postpone the celebration and elope instead. I started brainstorming designs for my dress one month before and the inspiration started with the location of our elopement, which was the beach. Hello, we are in the LA fabric district and today I'm going to be shopping for my elopement dress fabric. I was looking for an embellished sequin fabric that had more texture to it instead of the sequins that just lay flat. It also needed to be on tulle so it can feel light and airy and not mesh because I wanted the tulle to be a little stiffer so the skirt could have some shape to it. Because I was so particular with the kind of fabric I wanted for my dress, it made it almost impossible to find something I liked. We walked back and forth to so many fabric stores to compare different materials. And in the end, I went with this crosshatch sequin fabric. First, I drafted my skirt silhouette. I wanted an A-line skirt with a small train. I tried the sample skirt on and walked around in it to see if I liked the length of the train and then I can transfer my skirt onto paper. Today is October 1st. I have not worked on my elopement dress since the last video I filmed drafting this. Um, and yeah, now I'm going to finalize this pattern. This dotted line right here is where I'm going to cut it. So this is the fold of the dress. No, no. This is the fold of the dress and then this is the train. So I'm going to cut it here where the line is at. So the front can be its full piece and the back is going to be two separate pieces. After finalizing the skirt pattern, I cut out all the pieces from the fabric. Then I sewed the skirt together at the side seams. Next, it's time to draft my bodice. I decided on a deep v-neck, but nothing too plunging. And for the back, it will be an open v-shape back. And at this point, I was still deciding on if I wanted sleeves or no sleeves. All right, so I have my bodice pieces cut out to back side and to front side. There are darts that go here on the side, so I'll have to sew that together. But before I do so, I'm going to cut out a facing for these pieces out of, out of this nude tulle fabric. First, I sewed all the darts closed. Then I can piece together the bodice by sewing the center front together and the side seams closed. Repeat the same thing to the lining bodice and now I can sew the two layers right sides together along the front and back neckline. Since both layers of my bodice is tulle, I reinforce the seams with stay tape. I now felt like long sleeves would be too much sparkle, so I considered adding a little cutout sleeve like this, but it really restricted my arm movement. So with the votes of my sisters and aunties, I decided on no sleeves. 
But now I'm going to change the shape of my armhole and make it a V shape as well to match the neckline. Next, sew the shoulder seams closed. To close up the opening, I tucked in the raw edges and top stitched it closed, and also went ahead and top stitched the entire bodice so everything lays flat. Now I can sew the bodice and skirt right side together at the waist. Then I added an invisible zipper to the back and closed up the rest of the skirt. To cover the raw edge at the waist, I sewed some tan bias tape along the inside. I finished my dress sooner than expected, so I had time to add a beautiful horsehair braid hem. This narrow horsehair braid is so easy and quick to use. I just sewed it right sides together along the edge of the hem and then flip it over to the wrong side and sew the other side of the horsehair braid down. My dress is transparent so I'll need a slip to go under and originally I thought I could just do a nude skirt and wear my nude sticky bras under but the nude colors were different shades and it looked funny so I just created a mini slip dress. The cool thing about keeping the slip unattached from the lining is that you could always change the color of the slip and make the dress look different. When cutting out the bodice for the slip, I had to take away the seam allowance or even more so that the slip doesn't stick out. I'm using swim fabric for the slip because it's stretchy and comfortable and actually came in handy because we ended up getting in the water for our photo shoot. Lastly, you know I had to make a matching face mask because 2020. I also made Eric a black satin face mask as well. And I'm finished. Here is my final elopement dress along with some behind the scenes from our photo shoot with the amazing Jenny Tai photography.
Janita. Yeah. There's my sister and Alexis, my cousin Alexis. Look at the sunset. Beautiful sunset. Woo so pretty. Okay, we can pull it out. <laughs> so much for watching and thank you to all the congratulations wishes that we received so far I'm so excited to see Jenny Tai's pictures that she took of us and maybe we'll do a little reaction to the photos on our second channel the cool Lerpa show so if you aren't subscribed already head over there so you don't miss out on any other vlogs that we're gonna post from our elopement and I'll see you next time bye